Hi everybody, Crimson here with Deco Art. And I wanna thank Michaels for having us today. And we're gonna do a fun project with paint pouring. And I will show you, we're gonna, gonna get into it. We're gonna be doing this fun fall project that's so easy and you're using the Fluid Art Ready to Pour Acrylics in the Sunkissed Pack. So we have this negative space pumpkin. This is super fun. And if we have time, I'm gonna show you some pours on some pumpkins as well. So that'll be fun. So I just, and uh, I wanna mention that Jennifer is doing the moderating. Say hi, Jennifer. Hi, <laughs> and if you have any questions while we're going along, just put those in the comments and she'll get those. To, she'll ask me or she'll answer them directly. And just don't be afraid to ask anything you need to say. Okay, so first I'm gonna show you the setup and go over some items. And I don't know how many of you are actually gonna be pouring along with me, um, but you will be able to watch this back. Is that correct? be able to watch it back yes. okay and so you can watch it back and um, go through it you're on your own so like i said we're using the fluid art ready to pour pack in the sun kissed now michael's carries um 12 of our different packs so if you wanted to do it in a different color way you could do that as well so that's super fun so obviously you're going to need a canvas and you can do that any size i chose 16 by 20 so i was gonna work a little bigger than usual, but um, you could go any size you want. And then we're, you're gonna need a couple of brushes for when you're doing the negative space painting. So just a flat brush is nice. And then just like a little liner brush. Um, Michael's has some great brushes for that as well. I just got a pack of different brushes so you can try those out. Now for the negative space painting, um, I use the Americana. I just like the, because our fluid art ready to pour acrylic, it pours and it has like a, uh, I'll show you. Let's bring you around here. As you can see, it has sort of like a glossy finish or a high satin finish. Semi-gloss. Semi -gloss. Thank you. <laughs> and, and so, and you know, if you've used our Americana acrylics, it has a matte finish. So it's a really cool um, to have that next to each other. So you wanna have some gloves. You don't have to use gloves. I just like it because it just helps um, helps keep it a little neater. Um, I like to have like some sticks, any kind of skewers that you can like prop your painting up if you're gonna be using it on a, um, a flat surface. Now I've coated my surface with like freezer paper. Um, you can use any type of non-stick surface or anything that you can throw away. I also, I probably won't be using this today, but what I like to use and to have and reuse and reuse is like a um, Tupperware, like some sort of tote like this, a low one, and then like a grate that you can reuse. And that's really great too, because you can peel up the paint once it's dry and, and then use those skins for different things. And here's another version. Just any type of thing where the excess paint can just drip down. So that's kind of fun and it's really satisfying to peel that paint up when it's dry. Just saying. So I'm gonna get you in this folder here. Does that look good, Jennifer? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna turn this around so you can see so you can get it. Looks good. Exactly All right, I'm gonna set the pumpkin to side. And so like I said, I just got some a pack of our fluid art ready to pour in a sun kiss pack. I've already started opening this one up a little bit just to get a jump start. So when you open the paints, they're gonna have this little security tab there. You just wanna peel that off. And um, I like to, a little tip is just to like shake your paints really well, like maybe 30 minutes to an hour before you're gonna use them. That way you, the bubbles will settle. I mean, sometimes the bubbles help with the selling. So um, just try it out. I hope you experiment with it. Oh, I didn't mention you're gonna need some cups because this pour, we're gonna be doing like a circle pour. And so we, we're gonna put the paint in the cup and then pour it onto the canvas. So I have two different sizes. Um, 
if you have a smaller canvas, obviously use a smaller cup that way you don't not wasting paint. Put these brushes aside. Oh, and I also have torn some paper and I'll show you what I'm gonna use those for. Um, I like to spread out the base coat with those. Just, you can also use your hand. I'll show that as well. Oh, and I don't know if I, I think I mentioned baby wipes. Did I mention baby wipes? You definitely wanna have paper towels too, just for cleanup. And I have my garbage right beside of me just to make it accessible. So you just go ahead and open your canvas. Another tip, if you've ever paint poured, a really good thing, especially if you're doing it on a flat surface like this, because you wanna keep it elevated off the, off the surface for when the paint drips down, you can put thumbtacks in the corners. That works really well. Or you can also set it on cups or any other thing that's all level. The main thing is keeping it level. Once you get it, all the paint on there and you've moved it around the way you want, you wanna leave it level. So another tip with these um, canvases, when you first open a canvas like this, if it feels a little bouncy, I'm not gonna do this today, but um, you can just spray a little bit of water on the back and then that, you just saturate that and let that dry and the gesso will tighten and it'll sound more like a, a drum and that's even better for pouring. Does anybody have any questions so far? Go ahead and put some clubs on. Hey, where's this paint made? Oh, this paint is made in Kentucky. It's in Stanford, Kentucky. So um, this project obviously is inspired by fall. And I think the sun kiss pack is uh, perfect for this time of year, especially now here in Kentucky, the leaves have already started to turn and it's just beautiful. So. That it's got me excited. Right there. Okay, it's got me excited for fall time. Oh, did I not show the example? Yes, you did, but you can show it again. Absolutely, sorry. Yeah, if you're just now joining us, here's what we're going to be doing. So I was inspired again by the fall leaves using this sun kissed pack. And these paints are so amazing because they're literally, you can use them straight out of the jars. As you can see, I'm gonna, just gonna pour it straight out. Um, minimal prep, just shake it and, and remove that top. So, and you can see the difference here in the finish. That's what I was talking about earlier about that. what do you call it, semi-gloss? Semi-gloss. Semi-gloss in a mat. I just like that. Just make sure pumpkins, yeah. yeah, make sure pumpkins stand out. Okay, first you're going to put the ivory. Oh, let me say this. Michael's Carries are open stock and they have 28 colors, beautiful colors of this ready to pour paint in that eight ounce. So if you want a bigger pack, these packs are really good for trying out and see if you like it and for smaller canvases. But if you have a really big project you want to tackle, they have these bigger bottles, which are great. Um, and like I said, there's 28 colors, it's metallics. They're beautiful as well. But this pack, the Sun Kiss pack has the smoky pink, the golden yellow, the Sienna, which is my daughter's name, uh, ivory. And I love this combo. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get to it. I took the lids off. So what I do is I just go ahead and we're gonna base coat that canvas with the ivory. So this is what the, the paper is good to just get a smooth surface, spread that paint out really well. So someone, there's a couple of questions. Okay. Number one, do these paints give you a lot of selling? Um, I'll let you answer that first. You do. Um, they're not extensively selling. Like if you see, oh, because, okay. These are meant to use out straight out of the jar and you do get selling. Um, 
It depends, I think, more on how you layer the colors. So if you put like light colors next to dark colors when you're layering it in a cup, I think that helps as well for the selling. Um, if you can, you can also use our pouring medium, if you wanted to, and our selling medium that they also sell at Michael's, if you wanted to add even more sales. And does that help thin the paint if people think it's a little thick? Um, <coughs> yeah, but the consistency of this, the ready to pour is, is perfect for pouring. Now, if you did want to um, thin it down, you could add a little water. Um, the pouring medium is really just, it's like already included in this paint. So you don't really need it. But if like, say you were mixing another color of like say Americana <coughs> with the pouring medium, it's compatible with these paints. So you could use them together. So I usually kind of do that with my hand, but I was trying to be neater. I'll just show you. <laughs> Cause I'm gonna get the edges. Now that was a ready to pour paint that you put on as a base, correct? Yes, the ivory and the sun kiss pack. So I just like to get that whole canvas covered. And usually, like I said, I would be having this over my little grate and Tupperware, just, but space is limited here and I want you to be able to see everything. So I'm gonna do it flat on this surface and I might put a couple of skewers underneath. Did you just use your hands to- Yeah, okay. that works as well. Okay. I was showing both ways, but um, okay. Okay. you could do it either way. And like I said, you don't have to use gloves, but because um, it's water soluble, non-toxic, non -toxic, and you can wash your hands with soap and water and it cleans up nicely. All right, so now what we're gonna do is take our colors and we're gonna layer it in the cup. And you can experiment like, cause we're gonna do this like a couple of times, like mm, three or four times. So you can experiment with different ways you're gonna layer it in. You might get a different look. I like to start with the smoky pink. And I, I pour the paints in the side of the cup that's gonna give you a different look than if you pour it directly in the center. Just, again, that would be a fun experiment for you to try. And then I layered in some golden yellow. And then the sienna. And then some of that ivory. And I just start the layering again. Now I'm gonna keep doing this till I get the cup pretty full. These are non-toxic, correct? Yeah, and there's no fumes. That's what's great. They're like. I love using these because you're using them and you're not like having to wear a mask or do it outside. You can if you want, but that you don't have to. <laughs> so here's our paint in our cup. And then you're gonna, you can pour it directly like that, but I like to turn it where I'm pouring it out of the side opposite that I poured in the paint. And so I'm gonna do three puddle pours on the canvas in a circle motion. So this is our first one. Now again, you would get a different look if you poured directly in the center and just poured it directly without moving it. I'm doing this style. Like I said, I hope you experiment and try out the way you like this. I'm gonna switch up the pattern here. You can do the same um, color layering if you want. Is anyone pouring along with us today? Uh, I can't see everyone, but I think some people are. If you're nice. pouring along, 
give us a shout out, let us know. And I wonder if um, this is some people's first time pouring Tender and what experience, what Tender experience they've had with it. So Kendra says she is, what, what size cup are you using? This I think is a four ounce cup. Let me see if it says, oh, five ounce, five ounce. You can use the big cup BC how, um, I mean, there is paint left in there, and I just don't like to waste paint. So I'm gonna do another one here. Do you find it therapeutic to paint with this? Um, yeah, it's like, um, I don't think you can mess it up really. There's, and it's never going to be the same, which is fun too. Um, I can imagine. Yeah. And like I said before, our paint is made here in Kentucky, in Stanford, Kentucky. So it's made with love. <laughs> So here's our basic shape here. And you can add more paint here if you want, just to help it move around. But you don't have to, let's see. So we're just gonna get it started and see what happens. So I'm just gonna move it around before I let it pour off the edges. Can you see that mm -hmm. hopefully? I found it really like challenging when I did a big canvas at first, like when I first did a big canvas. So hopefully like, you know, if you're, if you're a little daunted by that, then obviously start with a smaller one. You still get beautiful looks and um, you can do multiple small ones and then create like a, a grid on the wall. That'd be really cool with all different shapes of pumpkins. Emma has a question. Okay. She wants to know if you can use the same cup each time you do a mix or do you prefer using a fresh cup? I've done both ways. Um, it does seem to, you can, you can, uh, especially with this one where you're using the same colors over and over again. I think it would be fine if you're using a bunch of different colors. Um, it might, yeah, it'd probably be fine e either way. I, I'm just kind of particular. <laughs> so you like to use a fresh cut? I like to use a fresh cut, but I don't think honestly, if it would make much of a difference. So sometimes it moves a little slow. It's probably because I didn't get enough paint down there. I'm gonna pour some extra down here, help it along. That's a good tip. Yeah, it just helps it slide. If, like if you've got it part of the design that you really like and you wanna stretch it more. Then you can just like touch those edges there. Your, your corner is not completely filled up. I don't know if you can see that. This can be purchased at Michael's, right? Yes. And um, we have this. What I'm using is the Sun Kiss Pack. And it's a great because you don't have to like think about what colors you want to use. It's already picked out for you in this beautiful color palette, which is perfect but for fall projects, by the way. Mm -hmm. um, but they have 12 other sets that you can try out um, and get a bunch of different looks. And again, um, there's 28 different colors they carry as well in the eight ounce. So. So that's basically, I don't really like what happened here. I don't know why. 
I did that. <laughs> That's when I added that other paint. But look, you can pour it directly onto the surface as well. It's called a direct pour. So don't be afraid to just add paint. <laughs> and you know, and since we are just using like that negative space of the pumpkin shape, if your edges are completely covered or or they're kind of ugly, don't worry about it because you're gonna paint over it anyway. <laughs> so when you get a look and you can like envision where you want to paint your pumpkin, you're gonna just set that aside and let it dry completely before you go ahead and do your um, negative space pumpkin painting. Um, so what I would normally do is Let's see, I'm gonna put some sticks under here. Just to keep it elevated. I've mentioned that before, we keep it elevated off of whatever surface you're doing if you don't have like a tray that way. And another good thing about the freezer paper that it won't stick to the freezer paper. So if it does accidentally, like if you lay it on there and let it dry, you can peel it right up. How long does it take to dry? Um, this will be completely dry tomorrow like completely cured though, I'd say a couple of days. Um, oh, I just got paint in my hair. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Fun time. So like 10 to 12 hours, you let it sit and then but you let it cure about 24. Yeah, but over overnight is good for what we're gonna do, like paint on it. But if I was going to like pack it or anything, I'd give it a little while let that paint cure. So I'm just going to move this over so it can dry alone. Hopefully. Somewhere, maybe on the floor. <laughs> Nobody said fun. Now I'm going to bring this back. Add another little tray. So now you're going to show us how to create the pumpkin. Yes, correct? so I have one that's dry. So you can see this surface semi-gloss. So this is the fun part to me because you're like envisioning, okay, what kind of shape do I want? Where do I want my pumpkin to go? You know, you could just do the, the edge of a pumpkin, like the top half and do it horizontally. Or you could do it the way I did this one. Do the whole pumpkin shape. You could do multiple pumpkins. I, that's what's so fun about it is like it's just you're really highlighting the areas that you really love about your paint for so you can really do anything and I think if you did multiples like I said you can hang them all together and it'd just be really cool so what am I doing now this sit down <laughs> can you still see it push it forward a little bit toward me okay yeah. there perfect Oh, actually, I'm going to be doing this way, so okay. just kidding. <laughs> so like I said, I'm going to use the light buttermilk and the Americana acrylic. Um, you could obviously use any color you wanted. I just thought it was a good color that makes these sun-kissed, ready-to-pour colors pop out. So. All right. Did you have a, an inspiration for doing this? Like, what, um, how did you think this up? Well, I had a paint, I have a couple of paint pours at home that um, I'm not real like pleased with how they look as just a piece individually. Mm -hmm. So I was trying to think, how can I use this? Cause there were certain areas that I really liked. So like, oh, I really like that area. But this over here is kind of boring. And what's great about these paints is that you can paint back into them and paint over them. So I experimented with that. And then I liked leaving that negative space of the pumpkin shape. And I thought it, those colors inspired me for fall. So I actually have on, I believe on our website, um, the project is on there. They wanted a template, but I just like to freehand it. So, um, don't be scared because um, this is another good thing. You'll see another good thing about baby wipes is if you make a mark and it's not, it's not dried yet, you can just kind of wipe it off real quick. <laughs> so 
So I think that I'm going to do my pumpkin. Let's see, which way? I think I'm gonna do it this way, because this is kind of interesting. So I'm gonna do the shape here and have this stem going this way. So I'm just gonna freehand it. That's what's good, like having a little um, liner brush to do that rough sketch first. And if you have a favorite shape of pumpkin, obviously do that. Do the stem. So really you're just thinking about this inside space here that you're leaving. Everything else is gonna be painted out. So if you have a mistake out here, don't worry about your lines because you're gonna paint that away. So someone asked, how do we find the template at decorart.com? Is it under? Um, it should be under fall pumpkin. Okay. Oh, it's under projects. Okay. And it's um, fall, maybe paint pour on canvas, pumpkin okay. paint pour. Say that 10 times fast, pumpkin okay. paint pour. <laughs> You know, you can, if you have a pumpkin at your house, you can just kind of look at it and take inspiration from that too. Or any picture that, if you see a picture of a pumpkin you really like the shape of, use that for your inspiration. You know, pumpkins are organic and kind of wonky looking sometimes. Those are my favorite kinds. That's what I'm going with. How long does it take the Americana cake to dry? It's, it dries pretty fast, so um, I'll be able to do probably two coats if I don't run out of time. So it could be ready to end this afternoon. Yeah. Right? Same well, that's tomorrow, tomorrow, if they let theirs dry. <laughs> yeah, the paint pour has to dry, but once it's dry. So I made a mistake here, so I'm going to show you with the baby wipe how easy it is to just pretend like that never happens. <laughs> and just dry it with paper towel. still see it. So we have a great question okay. from Nancy. Can you paint pour on wood instead of canvas? And if yes, do you need to prep the wood in any way? Um, yes, you can pour it on wood and you know, you don't have to. I've never had to prep the wood. I've done 3D objects. I've done uh, wood boards, wood all kinds of things. It works beautifully with wood. It works on a lot of different things, actually. You can, I've poured on glass, I've poured on ceramic, I've poured on some plastics. Works fine. Um, like I said, you can do, you can pour directly on a nonstick surface like this freezer paper. Like if I wanted to do like a little dot like this and maybe add, can you see that? Yes, we can see um, that. If I wanted to do things like this and then I allowed that to dry, I'd be able to peel that off and then stick it to things or use it in other projects or stick it on other paintings or a pumpkin. So that's really fun to experiment with. Especially if you're you're doing your pores and you have all that excess paint that drops down, um, have fun with those things. Use them in collages. They could collage them onto things. They could actually be like clings too, and um, you can peel them back off if you stick them to like glazed ceramic or glass. Anita says she's even poured on slate before. Nice. Oh, that's good to know. Yeah. I didn't get a water cup. <laughs> All right, so now I like my shape of my guy. So now I'm just going to use my flat brush and just go for it.
So what are the four colors that are in the paint pour again? Yeah, it's the golden yellow, the smoky pink, I'll show you. Ivory, smoky pink, sienna, and golden yellow. Those are so pretty. I love it. It's, it's a very cool fall palette. And I think these colors go really well with the, the metallic ready to pour fluid art. So if you wanted to add that to this mix, it would be really cool to have that metallic in there. So I like to get the paint on there. I don't know if y'all have experience with this, but I just like to get the paint on there. And then if I want to make my brush strokes more um, uniform, then I do it. I get it on, get it on there first and then you can move it around. And this gives you a nice, um, this is a water-based acrylic that gives you a nice matte sheen, correct? A yes, the sheen. Americana acrylic, mm -hmm. yes. And you could leave how it's sort of like a ghost look, look right now where you can kind of see the, the paint pour through. Um, I kind of like that look, but I went ahead and did two coats to get this. I mean, you could even make it even more opaque if you wanted to just completely make it solid and just do another coat if you wanted. But I kind of like it at two. It's 435, oh. FYI, so you know. Okay. That is good enough. 433, but that way you want to show anything else. I do kind of, if anybody's interested, I'd like to show the little pumpkins. Show of hands? No, show, kidding. Yeah, <laughs> would like to see the little pumpkins? You're going to do a pink pour with little pumpkins? Yeah, it? the okay. same color, color choices. Just so I thought it was a good accent to have this. If you did that little... Um, well, you, you get the gist of this, so you're not missing out on anything. <laughs> so I'll go ahead and finish the, the first coat. Okay. And like I said, it dries pretty fast, and especially if you, you could set it in front of a fan, you want to or, uh, blow, blow it with a hairdryer. And ivory was the base coat Americana color, correct? Um, no, it's the oh. light buttermilk. Sorry, my bad. I'm but, sorry. you know, ivory would work as well, just any color that you like with those fluid arts. That's basically it. Obviously, I'd paint the sides too, which I'm not showing, but you got to finish those sides. Okay. That's good. And yes, everyone would love to see the pumpkin. Okay, yay. Okay, I'm going to show them. So I'm going to show you what they look like. Let's These are really fun. So you can get all different sizes. Um, you don't have to base coat them. Um, like if you wanted to base coat them first, if, if any of it's going to show, you can do it with that light buttermilk again. Or you could base coat it with the ivory paint pour. You just have to let that dry first. So what I did was I just went ahead and painted the stems with um, our Extreme Sheen. If you want those to be gold, I just thought they looked good with those colors. Um, so I'm gonna show you. Aren't these beautiful? And this cool, I love how this turned out. I'm gonna show you how I did that. I just blew on the paint, which was really fun. Just gave it a different look. Then the marble look, it's more like, I don't know, like cloudy. <laughs> I don't know how to describe it. So the, what I like to get with these, the cups do work great for this because you want to let that paint drip down. So I'll show you the big one first. I'll probably just put those on. A, those are the five ounce cups, correct? Yeah. You could use like little, um, I don't know, is that the smallest they get? Uh, I think there's smaller ones. Like yeah, like if you're going to use them just for a stand, a smaller, even smaller one would work or anything really that you could, it wouldn't stick, like just any sort of plastic or silicone. Okay, so I'm going to do this. I'm going to pass the box. Now I feel like I'm rushing. What time are we at? No, you're okay. It's okay. 4.36. Okay, good. So you have 25 minutes. Okay. And people are excited and want to see this. 
Okay, so I'm gonna do, actually, I'm just gonna go ahead and do the same way. Well, let's do something different. So I'm gonna pour it down the center with the painting and the circle pour, I poured it on the side. So this way you can see how that changes when you do it this way. So if you pour it directly in the center, you can pour it into the paint or you can also lay it on top. And that'll give you different results. Like I said, it's fun to experiment and see how those little changes change how it looks when you pour it out. I think all the pumpkins are on sale right now too. Nice, so perfect. It's a perfect time to create extra home decor items with our paint for. And you know, it's paint. So like next year, if you're like, I just really don't like these colors anymore, then you can try a different one. <laughs> just pour right over it. All right, so what I do is I just kind of go around the top. Can you see that? Yes. Awesome. So you're pouring around the metallic painted stem. Yeah. Okay. And so you can like leave it like just a little bit or you could do the whole thing. I think it's really cool when it's just like a little bit and you can see the drips. Oh, yeah. Maybe I'll do that with this one. And like if there's like, oh, you're like, I don't, I really want more pink or whatever. Or let's see, I want more golden yellow. You can pour directly on there too. You don't have to use a cup. You can just do the direct pour right on there and that gives you more defined rings. And you can move that around until it's the way you want. And then you just let it sit still and let it dry. So isn't that cool? Yeah. Now, will that cover like the other pumpkins that are fully covered? Will it drip down or will you, will that? Well, if I, if I, that would, once you move it, uh -huh. it might drip a little bit more, but that's basically how it's going to look. So okay. if you want to cover it all, you could either keep doing that until it's dripped okay. all the way down and then you're just really just moving it around on the bottom. So this one, we want to keep the drip. Look. Yeah. Okay. I want to keep that. So. I'll show you. I'm a small guy. So are these, can you do this on real pumpkins? Yeah. Are these, these are plastic pumpkins, correct? Yeah. Okay. You can do, uh, absolutely. So they're real or plastic. Or they're plastic. But you could do it on any pumpkin. Really. Absolutely. Yeah. You need pumpkins. Um, I guess that doesn't need to be perfectly clean. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to show you another, another guy or gal or pumpkin. Let's see. All right. So now what are you going to show? I'm just going to try to cover this whole thing. Okay. So you can see the difference. So then I might drip it on those, the parts of the pumpkin that are sticking out because obviously the drips want to go down the valleys. Mm -hmm. So you can maybe focus on the, I don't know, mountains. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. 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 And you can do different things on on the same pumpkin, like different pours. Like I said, with the direct, or you can try this side pour with this one. What's great about this is you can continue to add paint and it doesn't, you know, it, it, it just is still just as fun and cool. Yeah. You know, so it's, it's not a panic situation if you run out of paint during your pour, you can just keep going. Yeah, or if you run out of paint pour paint, then just mm -hmm. paint it with regular paint. That like neat. your areas, like if you had an area that didn't get covered, mm -hmm. I mean, Honestly, I could just dip it in the extra paint. Mm -hmm. And that could be a whole nother look. Well, let's try that. So that one's That's pretty much covered. Really so put that guy aside. 
And so, do you put these outdoors? Can they go outdoors, or do you have to? Put um, you can. I would burn. like if I was going to put them outside, I would put like um, a coat of our dirt clear varnish on it. Okay. That way, it'll be safe. You won't have to worry about it. So this is going to give a different look if you like dip it in your extra paint here. That's fun. Never done that before. <laughs> That's what's fun about this. Like you, you'll just be like, mm, what if I try this? And then you get a cool look and you're like, I am a genius. <laughs> <laughs> and it's fun to do it all at once. That way you have all different looks and they all go together. So there's a different little one. This one, I'm gonna show you this look because I really like it. And it's basically the same thing that I've been doing, but once the paint on there, you blow it. So I mean, can you talk about how you would use this for window clean? Someone's very interested in that mm, too. Okay. So you obviously would have to let it dry on a non-stick surface like freezer paper, which is great, or like a silicone mat. And I've peeled it up when it's dry to the touch. I mean, you can peel it up and you can see, oh, it's kind of still wet underneath. Depends on how thick your, your pour is. You want to make it pretty thin. Um, yeah, that's, and you just peel it up and it would stick. Obviously it would be the reverse because the back, like if I peeled this little guy up, the back would be stickier than the front because it'd be flatter. I don't know if that makes sense. Hopefully it does. So I have this. Oh, that looks kind of cool. Would this be a fun kids project because it's oh, non-toxic and easy to use? Absolutely. That might, that might be, depending on how wild they are, you might want to do it outside before it gets too cold. But um, I always put mine in the bathtub when they were doing wild paint projects. <laughs> that way I could just wash it all off at once. Okay, so. Do any of these have to do clear varnish on them or no? They don't. Okay. Um, but like we have different um, finishes of the dark clear. So if you wanted to do a high gloss or just keep the same, which is like a just a gloss or semi-gloss, we have all different ones. Or if you wanted to tone it down, we have a matte. So to get this look, see what I just did? Just So it's like a watercolor look almost. I love that. So the bottoms. And you blew on that? Yeah. Can you show us again how you did that? Oh yeah. So now that I've did that bottom, I I will for sure have to put it on something not stick. So someone suggested large thumbtacks on the bottom. Yeah. Pumpkins, or like you said, even the little. That's ounce perfect. Cups. Yeah, I've done that with canvas, but that that's even better actually because you're not going to get that um, that area where the cup sits. So yes, whoever said that, yes, thank you. Um, so you did you like? Do you want to do three probably, okay. like a triangle? That way it'd be most sturdy when you're setting it down. Okay. All right. How are we now? Um, it is 445. Let me see if there's any questions. Yeah. Let's see if anyone has questions. Oh, this one looks like caramel app. So you could probably save all that paint for that's right there on your yeah. So like this, like she said, this, what I like to do too, I'll like spread it out thinly. Ooh, yeah, and then when that dries, oh, that's kind of cool. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so I did that on purpose. But yeah, so then when that dries, I could peel that up, cut it, use it in collages. I don't know, put it in jewelry. 
do all kinds of fun things with it. So, I think. I don't think anyone has any questions. You might want to just reiterate about our paint. How about the key product features? Okay, so I am going to show you. This is the pack that I used, which is the ready to ready to pour fluid art um, sun kissed pack. And like I said, Michaels has 12 different color packs. So if you're not into this colorway, they've got you covered. And again, they have 28 different colors in the eight ounce bottles. So if you want to do a bigger project or multiple small ones, they've got you covered on that front too. So is that, is that everything that we need to know? And so and it's ready to use out of the bottle. Absolutely. Non-toxic, made in Kentucky. Yes. And you're ready for fall. Look at that. Yes. And I hope you all try it out and let us know how it goes. All right. Thank you. Thank, you. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Jennifer. <laughs>